all. Welcome to the club, Mama. I am pregnant with number two and my first baby just turned two. So I'm going through all of my notes. I'm going through everything. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm really gonna do this again. Yes, I am. And I'm a lot more prepared this time. So I don't have those fears. It's more of just like, wow, I'm gonna be really hungry. And my boobs are gonna, but we'll get to that later. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe because I upload new videos every single week. It's all about motherhood, health, a little bit of baseball because my husband plays professional baseball. Come along on this adventure with me. I'm not an expert, whatever. I don't know, I just try to like go through life with humor. So let's dive into my 20 tips for first time moms. Number one, don't let other people scare you. Okay, so this is pre-baby, this is pre-delivery, when everyone would come up to me, see my huge belly and say, oh, like, are you ready for no sleep? Oh, say goodbye to date nights with your hubby. Like all these negative things and I was getting terrified. I was like, my life is literally gonna be over. And nobody really knew that I was having this battle in my head but I was getting really nervous because I was like, no one's making it sound great at all. Fear not, motherhood is what you make of it. So just be positive and be excited. If you're negative, it's gonna be a negative experience. Number two, if you say this exhaustion is temporary, literally out loud to yourself, it's not as bad. I had to do that all the time. Here are three tips for getting through your sleep deprivation. One, sleep when the baby sleeps. I know you've heard this a million times. You'll feel so much better. You'll make healthier choices in your eating. You'll be a nicer wife, a nicer mom. Just sleep. Two, hire a night nurse, whether it's your husband or actually hired help or your mom. They'll take the baby for you in the middle of the night and do the night feedings. And then three is say something positive every single morning, whether it's this exhaustion is temporary or I love my kid. I'm so happy to be a mom. Something positive to start your day always will do the trick. Number three, everyone's gonna wanna hold your newborn and that's the last thing you're gonna wanna let them do. Very frustrating because you're like, can you just see that I just birthed this child? But I also made a promise to myself that I would let people hold him so that I didn't have this dire need to be with my child. I didn't wanna be a helicopter parent. I said that from the very beginning, so I had to force myself to let other people hold him. It got a lot easier. There were times when I was like, no, I just need to hold my kid. Communicate, that's fine. Everyone's gonna wanna hold your baby. Let them. Four, let your husband help. This is a huge tip. They don't have motherly instincts. We women are just born with this instinct, like I know how to take care of a child. Like you just, it's so cool when it actually happens. You have to teach them, but you also have to include them. It'll make your relationship stronger. It'll give you confidence and him confidence. And it'll actually let you have a break. If you need to go out for the morning, you can trust that everything's gonna be fine. It's just all around better for your relationship if you let the guys help. It's a tag team. You won't get as exhausted. Win, 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 win. Five, don't buy everything. I know Pinterest, Instagram, YouTube, they have these amazing nursery pictures where you're like, oh my gosh, I want all of that. But I promise you, you don't need everything. You don't need the expensive things. You just need a positive mindset. It's so cheesy, but that's like the greatest thing you can do. You really don't need to buy a lot. It'll save you a ton of money, a ton of time, a ton of stress. Six, this is a night feeding tip. Don't turn on the light when you're breastfeeding in the middle of the night. Don't turn on the light when you're changing their poopy diaper. And you don't need to change them in the middle of the night if they're just wet. If you turn the light on, he or she will wake up a little bit more than you want them to, so just keep the light off. Seven, don't stop taking your prenatal vitamins immediately after birth. Your hair will fall out a lot faster. You'll get a lot more weak and a lot more hungry. So keep your prenatals going. And when you go off of them, gradually, if you have one that can be cut in half, cut your prenatal in half and then take a day off and then take another half. If you stop immediately with anything in your body, your body's gonna go through a shock, especially if it's good, clean nutrients. Number eight, have emergency diapers everywhere. Nine, this comes from my health side and my health background. Newborn babies are the most susceptible, subse susceptible people for being affected by toxins. Oh, I mean, I could do a whole video on this, but I'm talking about your laundry detergent, your perfume, your home scents, like plugins, anything like that. 
those babies are going to be highly affected by that, whether it's giving them asthma or eczema or any type of skin rash or irritation or GERD. They are so highly affected and it's such an underrated conversation in motherhood. My husband, I had to tell him to stop wearing cologne for a period of time because I don't really wear perfume. I don't like the chemicals in them. But if Tate would have perfume on or cologne and then he would hold Riker, Riker would get a red rash on his cheek almost immediately. And that, eh, it's just frustrating and you don't want toxins around your sweet little baby. 10, this is for you, mom. Have healthy food around at all times. This is, uh, especially the first couple of months, you're recovering, you're having a lack of sleep, you are learning how to breastfeed, you're learning how to take care of a child, yourself, and your husband all at the same time. It's a huge transition. So I say all of that because when you're stressed, when you're exhausted, you wanna reach for sugar, fat, greasy food, and that's the last thing you need, that's the last thing your baby needs through your breast milk. So just always have healthy snacks on hand. 11, get a milk steamer. It will save your life and save a lot of time. 12, this is all about the breasts. I felt like I couldn't say boob because this is going on the internet, but it's a huge part of motherhood, especially the first couple months. The top three things I wanted to share were nipple balm. I didn't have any problems with my nipples because I had nipple balm and I put it on religiously. Number two, breast pads. Your boobs are going to leak at all times in the first couple of months, especially when your milk comes in. Like you could be sitting there having a nice conversation and your shirt would just get soaked. It just happens. If you hear a baby cry, you're gonna leak. I promise, get breast pads. Three, invest in like one or two really comfortable nursing bras. They have like little clips and you just Fold the flap down and you can breastfeed super easily. It's such a good investment. I'm very minimal. That's like the extent that I would get. I think I had two. Yeah, and it really helped. 13, when the baby is crying, stay calm. It is so easy to get frazzled, but if you get frazzled and you get stressed out, your baby can feel that stress. Tell them, literally tell them it's okay to cry. It is okay, you are safe. They are so much more intelligent than you give them credit for. I think that was one of the best tips that I had ever read in a book was just stay calm, don't get on their level. <laughs> like be the parent, be the adult. You'll thank yourself. 14, baby acne, eczema, bald spots that they get from sleeping and like moving their head. Don't worry about those things. I was so self-conscious when Riker had like a rash on his face or his bald spot. It lasts like a few weeks. They won't even remember it. Nobody else will remember it. And call your doctor instead of Googling because there are so many things on Google that could freak you out about like what's actually going wrong. Call your doctor, they'll put you at ease. Don't worry about their sensitive skin and their hair loss. <laughs> they'll get cute, don't worry. 15, keep a bedtime snack for your night feeds really close by, something that's not loud, something that won't wake up your baby. For me, it was a Go Macro Bar. I literally had a Go Macro Bar a night for about three months and I lost all my baby weight. So it like wasn't a bad vice, it wasn't unhealthy. Oh, and keep water next to you at all times. When you breastfeed, it's literally just liquid draining out of your body. Within minutes, you will feel like your mouth, like, like I need water. 16. So before I had the baby, everyone was freaking me out about how you're never gonna have one-on-one -on -one time with your hubby anymore. False, it is so false. If anything, I fell more in love with my husband and distance makes the heart grow fonder. Take this from a family in the baseball industry and a baseball wife. When you're busy with your baby all the time, you crave time with your husband and when you get it, it's so intentional, it's so sweet. And honestly, like, I think Tate and I just went to the movies in our sweats one night when Riker was really young and my mom was just like, go out, go to dinner, do something. You have other priorities now and you're kind of on a milk schedule, but you need each other and you will feel it. So don't worry about not seeing your husband. You'll see him and the time will be so much better together. 17, okay, this is gonna like probably throw you for a loop, but we were on baseball schedule and I wanted to go to his games. I didn't want to miss out. And I also wanted him to see Riker because he would 
you know, wake up at 10 or 11, be at the field till 10 or 11. So what we decided to do was put Riker to bed after the baseball games, and then Riker would sleep. Obviously, I'd feed him in the middle of the night, but he would sleep till 10 o'clock the next day. So anybody who asks me, I tell them, put your kid to bed late. Let them have a late bedtime and they'll sleep in, most kids, will sleep in like the full 12 hours. Like if we put Riker to bed at 11, he would wake up at 11. It was amazing. And I got so much done in the mornings. Like I would be able to pump, work out, have my breakfast, then he would wake up. Try it. 18, newborn clothes, don't buy them. They grow out of them within weeks, literally within days. And they're swaddled anyway, so it's kind of a waste of money especially newborn shoes. Just put them in socks. 19. There are so many rules today online in books that are like pacifier, no pacifier, drink milk, don't drink milk, breastfeed, don't breastfeed. I'm here to tell you that you know what's best, you have instincts, they will kick in and it'll be so empowering. Just learn what works for you, especially like nighttime schedule, so different for us and it worked for us. Everyone's experience is different. Feel empowered by creating your own routines and your own rules. 20, and this was very important for me to understand. I wish somebody told me this, but acting like you have it all together as a new mom, I did that and I was the most stressed out I had ever been in my entire life. I wasn't asking for help. I wasn't admitting that I needed help. I was actually like, very hostile towards people who were trying to help me. So I was like, I got this. I don't need any help trying to prove it to myself. You are in such a vulnerable state. You're learning so much. Be transparent, be real. This doesn't mean like complain and be a victim, but just like communicate with people like, mom, I really need help. Or like my sweet mother-in-law, I really need help. Or I need someone to help me clean my house. I just can't do it. They will be over like that. They want to help you just understand that part of the equation and it'll make everything so much better. On top of all that, just be positive. Like it's one of the greatest things of your life. Being a mom is so empowering and so humbling and so much fun. I laugh all the time. I'm also tired, but like, it's not a tired that's ruining my life, you know? It's like part of life. So that concludes this video. I wish you the best of luck in whatever stage you're in. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions. I'm only 25. I don't have this down to an art at all, but these things work for me and I love helping other women. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, again, like and subscribe. I will have a new video up for you in one week's time. Yes, thank you. Good luck. See ya.